Thoughts, moving comments? No, excited to uh, get back started with spring ball. Uh, there were a lot of new faces uh, in the coaching staff, and there's a lot of new faces that are going to be on the field. But there's a uh, it's exciting. It's exciting to get a new, fresh start with uh, installing a new offense, new defense. And uh, I think the energy in the building, the guys are excited about learning the systems and excited about Coach McIntyre, excited about Rich Rod. So a lot, a lot of energy in the building, a lot of excitement uh, and ready to get started. All right, raise your hand if you have a question. We'll bring the mic to you. Start with David here. Man, when you guys recruited Grant Tisdale, it was a, a little bit of a different offensive system, different offensive coordinator. How do you think his skill set plugs into what Rich Rodriguez is bringing to the offense? No, I think it, I think it fits really, really well. That's uh, and it's so important that he's here in mid year. And the way we're gonna go, uh, we're gonna go four with the ones, three with the twos, and two with the threes. That way, we're able to get all the quarterbacks reps. But to answer your question, Grant is a uh, very, very good thrower. He comes from a great program in Allen, but he's also a very willing runner. So I think he has the ability to do both, and that's really what we want to do. We want to. We still want to be balanced with a little bit more of a emphasis on running the football, especially in the red zone. Questions? When you talk about that balance, Matt, what, what do you expect this offense to look like in terms of run versus pass? Well, you know what, I think part of being a good offense is doing what your skill set allows it to do. And I think, um, you know, Coach Rodriguez, he's known as from quarterback runs. He's also had systems where he's had you know, talented passers and talented receivers. So I think, uh, you know, getting a field this spring will be very, very important. But I do want a physical blue collar mindset. Now, that, that I think that's the uh, that's the edge that uh, he'll bring to the offense and, and a run first and set up the play action off of it mentality. But again, a lot of it will be predicated on, you know, on Matt Corral and how he does and then some of these young receivers as well. Can you comment on the health of uh, Montreal Custis, Jalen Jones, and Demarcus Gregory? Yeah, so De DeMarcus will be out there. DeMarcus Gregor will be out there practicing. Custis and Jalen Jones still have a ways to go, so they'll, they'll be in green jerseys. They'll be doing the walkthroughs, but won't be able to participate in any of the team drills or endo. But they will be out there in green jerseys and, and you know, just so to help with the installation of the new defense. You talked a little bit about developing a wide receiver. Obviously, a lot of bodies to replace in that room right now. What do you expect from the receivers that you have in? I know you got a couple of early enrollees and also some young players uh, returning. Absolutely, We're, we got some talented, got some talented guys in there. It's, it's their turn to step up. I think one of the unique things that uh, you've seen in our receiver room is even um, you know Dante Moncrief passing along the work ethic, and it's kind of gone on down the line, you know, all the way down to AJ and DK. But now it's time for a new crop of receivers to step up, and I'm. Really excited. Elijah made a bunch of plays for us last year, so he'll be back. Same thing with Braylon Sanders, but now Miles has got to step up. Excited about what Don Terrio Drum has done since he's been here. So it's just an opportunity for a lot of young guys to step up. Matt, with the, uh, I guess the new NCAA rules that's allowing y'all some time on the field, non ball stuff with your team, how much install have you guys been able to accomplish? over the last three weeks? Uh, it, it's very, very beneficial for us to get our our morning runs in and then go through walkthroughs. We're way far, we're way further ahead than we would normally be because you can do a lot more in a walkthrough than you can actually in a meeting room. So I think uh, that rule has been really good, especially in our, in our case where we're installing a new offense and a new defense. We've got nine or 10 installs in already before practice. So I think uh, it'll be a little bit cleaner than it normally would be because of Matt, you signed a lot of offensive linemen, but to my knowledge, most of them are not here right now. How much uh, is depth, uh, current depth of offensive line, just a challenge to, in terms of what you want to do in the spring? Yeah, it will certainly be a challenge. We're going to be running three groups, so we have enough for three groups. But uh, I think until those other guys show up, it, it will definitely be a challenge. But uh, it will also give the opportunity for a lot of guys to get a bunch of reps that need. Um, you know, I think uh, it's kind of taken care of on the right side with Alex and Ben. Uh, Eli's done a great job at center. We've kind of used a different, couple different lineups um, with, with Royce at left tackle and Chandler Tewitt at left guard, but also with Bryce Matthews at tackle and Royce and left guard. So it'll definitely be a work in progress. Everybody always laughs at me when I tell them, my, you know, the job is to try to get the, the five best O-linemen out there. And I think that's what we'll use these 15 practices to determine. But we do have a, have a lot of guys that have got a bunch of reps, you know, Bryce and Royce, um, those guys, Chandler
up to it. They've been in the program a while. Now it's their turn to step up. Coach, you talk about installing a new defense. How have those the edge players kind of adjusted from maybe a shift from an end out to the linebacker? Position? Yeah, so it, it has been uh, it has been a little bit of a change with those defensive ends. Some of them playing outside linebacker. Some of the longer inside linebackers moving to outside linebacker. But the one thing I do like is the focus that it creates. You know, there's going to be a uh, there, there's going to be their own position, and there's going to be a lot more focus and attention to detail. And they're going to, you know, there's going to be one coach coaching those guys, and it's going to be very specific. And then on third down, they're going to walk down and play some defensive end too, and some pass rush situations. But I, I'm excited about it. Questions? Who are some of those outside linebacker guys that moved out from inside or moved down from? Yeah, so the two that the two that have really really jumped out. Uh, you know, Kadir Shepard and Chuck Wiley. I mean, Chuck Wiley's had a really, really good offseason. He, man, he's really impressed me. Uh, moving forward, we moved uh, Kevontae Ruggs out there. Jonathan Hess is one of those guys that we moved out there. So I, I think a lot of those guys um, will be able to have that length and play in space. I think that really helps. And then on third down, we take the nose guard out, bring those guys in. They play defensive end, and they can rush the pass. Sam Williams? Where is Sam Williams is a new guy. He'll be out he there in that same side. position. They'll start outside back. Just depend upon how big he, if he continues to grow, he may can move inside. But right now, uh, you know, he's just such a good athlete. Uh, and that's what he did really well at Junior College for us to pass. We're looking forward to seeing him coming off the edge. What is Devon Pittman's status? Yeah, so Devon is getting in really good shape. Uh, he looks pretty good right now. So I think we'll, we'll be able to see him for the first time in a while. Um, you know, at the running back spot, but he is looking good, starting to cut, change directions, doing all the things that we need him to do. So, looking forward to seeing him back in action. I guess just going in general, you have so many early enrollees this year. Is it easier to coach new schemes when you have complete blank slates to coach, or would you prefer to have? Maybe a more veteran presence to, well, to kind of make you through. I think I think you always yeah. want uh, more veteran presence, but but I do think it does create opportunities and to really build this thing the way we want. You know, I think to to build that blue collar, hard nose, you know, you know, unselfish mentality. I think when you have young players, you can build it that way. And these guys are hungry and they they, they want to step in and, and do well. But it is. I think we have eleven mid year enrollees that are here. That's certainly going to help because you get fifteen practices and. All the walkthroughs, they'll be that that far ahead when we get started in August. I know you hadn't done full speed yet, but is any in off season any of those eleven caught your eye and you said, "Whoa, okay, good deal." I mean, several of them have, you know. Again, and, and it's probably a little bit too early to tell, but uh, you know, Jerry Connor, he's just a good kid, hard worker. I think he fits right in that running back room. So I've been very impressed with him. Uh, Jaden is very, very fast. Jaden Jackson, a receiver. He's got a lot of ability. He's got the extra gear that you want. I'll be interested in how he handles getting off press and some of those things, but uh, very explosive. Uh, Don Terrio, you know, coming from junior college, he's a little bit more developed. He does some natural things. He's a playmaker, so I'm really excited about him. And you got Grant and Kincaid, a quarterback. You really don't know much until they get out there and go live. Uh, Jonathan Haynes. Uh, everybody knows we need safety depth, so I'm excited to see what he's going to do. He's been uh, working really well. Tay Stanifer's coming off that Achilles injury, so you won't see him much. He'll be in a green jersey. Sistron, I, I kind of got a feeling, a good feeling about him. He's already gone from 190 to 210 pounds since he's been here, so he's 210 already, and we haven't even you know got started. So I think if he can get to 220, 225. Um, as he, he continues to grow, I think he's going to be a really good inside backer. So excited about him. Um, and then Sam Williams, we talked about, and, and, and Jamar out there at corner. Uh, you know, those guys, have, have, they've all been good. They've all, you know, they, there's, there's going to be that transition they have to learn, but everybody's learning. So for these new guys, they're not coming in two years behind. They're coming in learning the system with everybody else. I think it gives them an opportunity to compete. Matt, you have a lot of, uh, I guess, off-season changes to make to your coaching staff, but Rich Rodriguez and Mike McIntyre in particular, uh, how have they plugged in? What have you seen from them in terms of the difference they've made in the program, maybe the energy they've interjected? You know what? I, I really, I'm really excited about the experience and the knowledge they bring. I, you know, I think that's your job 
um, as a leader to bring in the best people that you can. And, and probably what I what I like most is they sat in my chair, they see the big picture, they understand it. And even more importantly, our staff chemistry is really, really good. And I think that's, that's the most important thing. And I think the players, they feed off the coaches. And I think the chemistry of your staff is very, very important. And I really, I really like the direction we're heading. Coach, can you talk a little bit about how you come up and get with the Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we're, we're really, really excited to have Ty back. I love, uh, I've always had a lot of respect for him uh, as a person and a coach, and obviously Derek and I worked really closely together here, but uh, he's got a lot of experience, a lot of knowledge. He's gonna be able to help out schematically. He's been a coordinator before. Uh, he's an outstanding recruiter. He knows the area. Uh, just, uh, he checks all the boxes. I'm just really excited to have him back. Is there, is there a specific role you'd be looking for for filling this 10th assistant? You know what, I think because of all the uh, experience that we do have in the defensive room, uh, we, there's a lot of different ways we could go, but the most important thing is obviously fit. I want it to be the right fit. I, I've told a couple people I don't want it to be necessarily just a one-for-one -one swap, um, but, I, but I, I want the best fit and the person that fits our room the best. And there's a lot that goes into it schematically, being able to capture the hearts and minds of your players in your room and coach, and obviously recruiting is a huge part. So there's a lot of different parts of it, but the thing you want to do is not rush into anything, but to take your time to make the best hire for this program. So you do expect it to be a defensive hire? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Matt, not a, not a screen question, but you got nine former players who are going to be at the NFL Combine. Uh, you know, just a general comment on those guys and uh, you know how you expect them to perform. With it. I think they're all perform great. You know, I'm just just excited that you see all their hard work pay off. You know, some of these guys you've been knowing since they were ninth, 10th graders. And uh, just really excited. Some of these, uh, it was their lifelong dream to be there. So for them to see it come to rally and have that opportunity, it's really cool. And, and very, very uh, good representatives of Ole Miss, uh, not only on the field, but off the field. Just excited for those guys. Matt, when you make a good amount of staff changes, how long does it typically take for those guys to kind of get up with what you're trying to do? And is there kind of a time where you know, all right, it's finally gelled, it's working? Is there a moment, is it a feeling? How does that kind of work? Well, you know, I think uh, we, we spend so much time together that I think it generally happens faster than, than you think. We're, we're, all, we're in the room, we're, we're trying, and you kind of get thrown into the fire with all these walkthroughs and practice, and you're getting ready for spring ball. So, uh, you know, you kind of build it. You kind of get thrown into the fire, and you gel together because of how much time you spend together. But, but overall, I really love the staff chemistry that we have. I love the knowledge. It's a really good uh, a mixture of, of energy and knowledge, and, and I think the guys are hungry to get on the field. You've said the word chemistry like three or four times talking about the new staff changes. Is that something that has been lacking in the past few years? No, I just think it's something that's really important. I think chemistry is a huge part. I think people can feel it. I think the players can see it. I think the fans can sense it. And it's just a huge part. It's the same thing not only with the coaching staff, but with your team. I think uh, every, each team is different. Each team has its own identity, own personality, and own chemistry. And I think that's the, kind of the, the secret sauce between a, a really good season and an average season. Questions? All right. Thank you, All Coach. Right. Thanks.